So, welcome Chris. Thank this you, is um, our video podcast of conversations from the vault. As you can see, we're right in front of the vault. And um, it's sponsored by Angelina Carew, Hometown Realty. We appreciate um, any sponsorships that we get to support our emissions and initiatives that we do here at the Clayton Chamber. So, I'm glad to have you. Um, talk to me a little bit about who you are. I know everybody knows you, but, you know, for those of the, the, the audience that don't know who you are, um, what do you do? What's your role? And talk to sure me a little bit about that. Uh, Chris Johnson. I'm the economic developer for Johnston County. I've been in this position now a little over nine years ago. Um, I've uh, lived in Smithfield. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I own a retail store for over 32 years. I was the Main Street Manager and the economic developer for the town of Smithfield for about 15 years. I'm kind of a quasi-chamber of commerce type sure, thing yeah. that uh, I was responsible for, you know, Main Street activities, uh, small business, festivals, events, mm -hmm. things that uh, traditional chambers are, are aware of or do as well. And, uh, and I love that and uh, had the uh, opportunity to expand my role and I served on the the Economic Development Advisory Board and, and participated in the regional efforts on behalf of the county and uh, about 10 years ago Rick Kester approached me and uh, asked that if you know would I be interested in in filling this role there was a kind of a transitional period Mike to had been the right. economic developer for, for quite some time and, and then they brought in Peggy Anderson who had retired from the Department of Commerce but she was only here part-time right. and so was able to to bridge that gap and, and Peggy was a fabulous economic developer even just as a part-time mm -hmm. person but as we know the county was continuing to grow and, and a lot of the local and county leaders uh, felt there was a need to go ahead and step back up and, and, and make it a full-time position and so uh, I was very fortunate to be asked um, I kind of knew the county uh, knew various municipalities that uh, uh, that the county represents uh, you know coming from a small business background I uh, kind of knew the kind of the, the gritty us against them the, right. you know, small right. business versus big box type type thing and uh, and just have fell in love with it ever since um, everything that I do all the, the presentations that I make um, and I actually made one today I can trace it back down to the Main Street background Business is business is a business, regardless of whether you're a small business with you know two staff or a large corporation right. with two thousand staff or individuals. Um, you know it's meeting expectations of your client, uh, your customer, product, shipping, receiving. You know the same thing. So uh, it's something that I enjoy daily, and, and I, I've lived here since I moved here in 1990. Uh, my wife was five or six generation Johnstone, yes. and, and so. Uh, um, this was uh, her home and, and uh, uh, fell in love with it. And they'll probably bury me or sprinkle my, ash, <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle my ashes somewhere along the news river. Right, yeah, I totally get it. I'll probably be right there beside That's you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think that um, the choice for you for this position has been uh, such a positive um, thing for Johnston County. Um, Is this recorded? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'll send it to your boss. Speaking of, of your bosses, a lot of people don't realize where the economic development um, department lives right. in Johnston right. County. Um, you know, like they think chambers are entities of towns or municipalities, mm -hmm. and they're they're not. But but your department is correct. It's a, it's a okay. county position, and and you're correct. Um, economic development can mean so many different things for so many different communities Correct. and some are based out of the Chambers of Commerce, uh, some are county organizations and some of them are 501c3 standalone entities. Um, it really just depends on how the county is made up and the reason I think that uh, it's kind of under the, 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 the county and not necessarily a town or a chamber is the fact that Johnston County is very unique in the sense that we've got 11 municipalities, uh, with Clayton being the largest one uh, with about 30,000 people. 
the population of Johnson County is of just over 235,000. So 75% of our population really doesn't live in a municipality, they live outside in Johnston County. Sure. And whereas uh, Wilson is predominantly ran by the city of Wilson right. and vice versa, uh, Lee County is Sanford, obviously Wake is, is, is Raleigh, and, and I mean, obviously they got Perry and all the other stuff, but for the most part, Raleigh is the drive sure. of Wake County, Durham is for uh, Durham, and, yeah. and things of that nature. Where in Johnston County, it's, it's, it's a little bit unique, and, um, and so, uh, you know, my role is to make sure that, uh, that I stay very engaged with all of our towns and, and municipalities and, and meeting their needs because what Denson needs for, as far as economic development compared to Clayton is going to be different. And it's going to be, it's not going to look anything like what Princeton made. Right. And so the goals and, and the objectives for each community are maybe a little bit different, where Princeton may be more focused on small business uh, or attracting whatever that, that may be, Main Street type, type sure. of things, uh, where Clayton may be life science or, or manufacturing. And so being able to wear different hats at different times makes my job interesting mm -hmm. and fun and I enjoy it because each day is completely different depending on which community I may be in and visiting with. Right. So if you had to describe to a lay person mm -hmm. that's not in this arena, what economic development entails? What would you say to them? I jokingly say I'm a glorified cheerleader for the county. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and you do it. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> now, it, it's, it's, it's selling and telling the Johnston County story to the masses. Right. And figuring out which, uh, which avenue that, that may be. I mean, you know, whether it's social media or public speaking or doing podcasts yeah. or uh, <laughs> this is in this. Well, I think I did a video podcast, but I've never done a live podcast. So this is this is this is new. <laughs> Um, but it's just kind of never staying still and, and constantly trying to do what you th feel is the best for your community. Because at the end of the day, economic development is about job creation and about investment in your community um, and providing opportunities for the next generation. Right. So some of the things that you and I are both in, involved in are really kind of could be generational in the sense that things that we do and we have to be mindful of that so that that because there also could be a negative connotation sure, of that yeah. but, but the point is is that try to be mindful enough to say this is where the spirit of what we're trying to do and to look after those that may not be uh, may be less fortunate uh, may not have the, the, the best opportunities uh, and and changing generational um, outcomes for, for people that um, that may have never gone to college, but still are worthy of a, a good quality job, high paying job with benefits. So it's really trying to raise, you know, raise the, the bar for everybody. Right. And not necessarily um, just a select few. And uh, and th that's that's the thing, I mean, when you look at Johnston County and the diversity that we have, both socioeconomic, uh, diversity of, of people, everything, but then also the diversity of industry, I mean, we have in areas of the county that are very agricultural right. still, uh, that people are very proud of that. It's still one of our largest industries in the county. Um, we, we have probably still the most working farms of any other county in the state, so we have a proud agricultural heritage. But then, if you think along the I-95 corridor, and here in, in Clayton, you think about what we used to have with textiles and right. tobacco. Yes. Uh, you know, in Smithfield, there was Eaton mm -hmm. Corporation, Channel Master, uh, Fieldcrest Mills, Burlington Mills, yeah. um, and then KRA was Tobacco, and then here in Clayton, there was Champion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so the textile industry was, and, and the agricultural industry was, and manufacturing for that matter, uh, was, was, was the driving force. Right. Um, life sciences and pharmaceutical, I think everybody remembers when it used to be a cutter or, yes. or, or, or whatever. But it was a, just a small facility and about the size of a nap bar, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Something as right. far as a building along that. say 70. And, um, you know, things have kind of emerged and changed. And the, uh, but 
in the mid-90s, we, we really lost a lot of the manufacturing opportunities, and uh, they, because of NAFTA or whatever, they went, they went away. And so it's trying to bring those opportunities back. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we've, we've, I feel like we've done an extremely uh, good job in doing that. Obviously, we've got a lot of opportunities still ahead of us. It's just trying to find that balance of what the citizens want, because at the end of the day, um, just like you work for your membership, they ex have expectations. Um, I work for the county manager and the county commissioners who are voted by the citizens, and so we're making sure that, that we collectively listen to the citizens right. that we represent or our stakeholders. Right. And so, um, um, so basically, I just I just tell the Johnston County story. I try to we try to come across as being very pro business, business friendly. Um, but still trying to meet the needs of, of the residents, whether it's infrastructure or schools yeah. or fire and rescue or safe, you know, public work, or public safety. Uh, so, you know, government still has to have, they have to collect their bills to pay, pay the services that we expect. Um, but I think our leadership has done a fabulous job of meeting those needs at a, at a reasonable cost and, and getting a good return on investment. Right, so. right. So you mentioned um, in, uh, workforce, mm -hmm. and so some people might say, well, what does economic development have to do with workforce development? Um, you know, in talking to, to our businesses um, in the area and what I've heard across the county, um, and now we have a study to prove that, right. um, you know, workforce challenges are in the forefront of all employers' minds right now. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about getting involved in that arena mm -hmm. with the study, um, the Workforce Alliance that um, the Clayton Chamber and the other chambers, and we have other partners in that, speak to that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what are, what are our goals moving forward in Johnston County to now we've got this information, what are we going to do? With sure, it? and that's a great question, and, and it's really kind of a... It, the, the cake is in the oven, but yes. we'll see what uh, it's going to, it's going to, um, first of all, the, it, it couldn't happen without the collaboration of the Chambers of Commerce and our existing workforce partners, whether it's Capillary Workforce Development or Partnership for Children, the Visitors Bureau, and I'm trying to think of who was all that, 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 that was partners of that, but it really starts at the community college level, yep. but now, more importantly, at the public school level sure. or, the, or the traditional K-12 uh, level, whether it's charter school, private school, whatever. And, and showing or, or, or sharing the knowledge that we collect as, as representatives of business and industry, share those stories with the school system and try to make those connectors. Yes. Um, I quickly tell everybody I do not have the answers to everything probably have the answers to a lot of did, stuff. Right? <laughs> no, but I, I know, but I know people that do. Exactly. And, that, and that's that's our skill set and your position and my position is that people call me up not necessarily to get my opinion and say, who do you know that can solve this exactly. problem? Exactly. We're sort of the conveners exactly. and the connectors, yeah. And so and that just comes with I hate to say with wisdom, but time and I mean it's something that you're not I wish it's not going to fall out of the sky like manna from heaven, but right. it's something that it just, it's just, it's just experience and educating I mean, yeah, and, 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 and learning that. And so, um, with regards to workforce, obviously it's very critical, not just for Johnston County. It's, it's you talk to anybody in the triangle across the state of North Carolina, but then also I was uh, at a site consultant event a few days ago, and it's talked about that. So we're not in any situation that not everybody else is. Um, I was thinking about this question this morning. I'm going to lay some wisdom on you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and and, 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 and I, nobody, it's not one of those things, well, I heard it from somebody. So I, you, you got to make sure this is an asterisk. This came from Chris Johnson. Okay. Do and I was trying, yeah, yeah, well, no, but, and I'll get back to your question. Okay. okay. But, uh, um, well, let me let me answer your question. I'll get back to this this this, this pearls of wisdom. I'm giving okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's working with our school system and and changing the mindsets of parents of students and showing them opportunities 
um, here in the county that uh, they do not have to go into debt. Sure. Um, we have a lot of individuals that are that are uh, first generation U.S. citizens that whose family probably doesn't have a uh, high school education or right. even a degree or high diploma. And you know, and for the longest time, we were saying you had to have a college degree to be successful. When in reality, both you and I know that there's opportunities out there that are beyond the traditional four four year routes. And so it's just a matter of continuing to 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 sound that uh, or beat that drum uh, and that message. And um, that has to do with first making sure we have good partners with the school system. Our CTE program with Catherine and Reno, we've got one of the best in the state uh, with over 36,000 uh, students. We just found out the other day that nearly 32,000 are some type, in some type of CTE or have that in, on their curriculum. So it is being, you know, uh, the kids are being exposed to those opportunities now, whether or not they grasp onto it or not. Right. But, but it's exposing the opportunity. Now I think we need to make sure that we we share this information not only with the students but also the parents and 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 show the, the opportunities that they are. I think for the longest time we kind of really relied heavily on the community college system of let's just graduate them and then let them start trying to figure out what they want to be in life. Right. Uh, when in reality that kind of those conversations need to be had earlier and speaking with some of our larger employers and some of the things that they have to wait and start doing at the community college, they, they said this needs to be done in the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade so that when they cross the diploma or cross their the, the graduation stage and get their diploma, yeah. there's somebody at the end of the stage saying, here's a job application. Yeah. And you've got the credentials to do what we need to do. And here, by the way, is, is a path forward and when you, 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 you start identifying opportunities with salaries and what they can do. Um, I think that's, that's kind of where we are. Now going back to what I was going to say, and I hope I can phrase this right or, or come across in the right way, is that, you know, during the, and I'm just thinking of Johnston County, but I'm sure this could probably be duplicated across the United States. You know, in the 80s and early 90s, most of us, worked on a farm or knew somebody who worked on a farm and did something at least in the summer to be working on a farm. Right. Um, my father was a school teacher, but my uh, family members owned farms in Fuquay, and so every summer I was shipped off to go work in the back. Right. So we had that, that work ethic, and it was kind of expected. Um, and then fast forward, I mean, uh, and then there were people that, families that were working in traditional um, Manufacturing, and I just mentioned Eaton, Channel Master, Phil Crest, Burlington Champion, and the list goes on and on. Um, that so you had people that were you had young people that were working in farms, you had families that were working in manufacturing, and when that was I hate to use the word ripped away, but when that changed in yes, the mid nineties, um, you immediately said we're losing all our jobs. And, and there was almost a mindset in, the, in all the communities, and I think around the dinner table, it's like, you don't need, and, and, and having a son that was born in 95, so it was kind of around at the same time, yeah. of, of you don't want to go into manufacturing because you just lost your job, because I just lost, I me mean, I'm working in this field, I mean, right. you know, whatever factory. You just saw a huge change. Ch change, change. <laughs> you don't want to do this, and you need to start getting a four-year degree, or you need to go to college, you know, Job security, that's the path forward. Um, and so for the, and then, you know, and then five or six years later, with no child left behind, it changed the school system where we lost all of our trades and in the trades classrooms, and everything was being, our schools were being graded on um, how many kids were going to college and all this, every college prep and all this stuff. So, but you, so you lost a whole, group of people that would typically would have gone into the manufacturing, gone into the trades sector that kind of got thrown, not say thrown away, but just kind of pushed aside or, or forgotten about. Well, we've had 20 years of that discussion mm -hmm. up until just recently. Right. And so now we've got 20, you know, we, 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 when we have conversations, 
at our alliance meetings and you know, we talk to our industries, one of the top things they talk about is soft skills. Yes. And it's just showing up on time, a good yeah. work ethic, blah, 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 blah. Well, unfortunately, over the past 20 years, we've got a generation that has not, my son has never worked on a farm. Right. <laughs> um, and I'm sure, I don't know if your, your kids worked on the farm, but the point is that it, it, it changed the nature of, of what, and we, we had a lot of, uh, particularly in Smithfield, we had a lot of executives that were, were there that worked at those facilities that you know supported the Kiwanis, supported the road, uh, road uh, the Rotary clubs, the yep. civic organizations, the chambers of commerce, and you know there was a, there was a built-in network of leadership. And so for 20 years, it's kind of it's it it's changed. It, 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 it has waned a little yeah. bit. And so now what we're trying to do is fix. And, and when I say fix, it sounds like something's broken, but. It, We've got to change the way we've done things for right. the last 20 years because all those things that we probably had those discussions around the dinner table of like you've got to go to college, obviously it's not not working with right. college debt going through the roof and and now we've got you know three and a half percent unemployment and you've got X amount of thousands of jobs that are available here. At right. Jones I mean it's it's amazing. I saw a couple of back a year ago. I saw. A, graph of how many jobs were available in Wake County and how many homes were available. Right. And it was something like there was only a thousand houses and like 35,000 jobs or something like that. And then so I went and pulled Johnston County's numbers and they were identical. Now obviously we're not as big as Wake but right. it was like we only had 200 houses on the market and we had about 4,000 jobs. I mean right. but it, the percentage was identical. And so, um, the, having said that, is that, that I've lost my train of thought where I'm going, but the, the thing is, is that we've, we've got to change how we do things, and, and it's, it's just not Johnston County, it's across the Triangle region of meeting those needs and showing those opportunities here without going into debt. And, and there's jobs here in Johnston County, right. and that's what we're trying to meet. And so, it, it's, I've had some conversations with some small industries and, and um, uh, it, it's, it's tough to, to, to meet, you know, and the county obviously being very attractive, the region being very attractive. I mean, there's new companies looking at us on a daily basis right. and there's, you know, you know you got to, that makes your job it, 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 right? it does because you, you're trying to recruit new investment, new, but then also we need to make sure that we look after our existing industries, and that's the balance. And and unfortunately, I had a conversation with a with a, a plant manager uh, a few weeks ago. That's responsible for about five six locations. It's not a large company, but he said, Chris, he said this is this is a great area, very highly productive. We have labor issues unlike anywhere else here in Johnston County. Mm -hmm. And he says the next time that we consider an investment. It's going to be hard for me to recommend this site yeah. in Johnston County because of the labor issue. Right. So it, it's and that's existing industry. Sure. And so we need to we trying to cut, crack that nut and, and solve those problems again. I, I don't have all the answers, but I've got two good ears and one mouth, and yeah. I, I, hopefully we can assemble um, coming out of this study um, some of the things that I'd like to see happen is. Obviously, continue what Clayton Chamber has done with the, the launch Joko and the, the small business and the entrepreneurial spirit that I think we have. Right. I've done a fabulous job there. But, but then also create a, uh, a group, countywide group for HR professionals where best practices, mm -hmm. what can we do? How can we, how can we solve this? Now, to the individual that I was speaking about earlier about having some workforce issues, there are the industry for I think too long had it too easy of when it's seven or eight percent unemployment you've got a line of people exactly. out. Yeah. Now when there's when the individuals are interviewing you you're not interviewing them. Yeah. Um, it's they're they're having to think outside the traditional box and so they're going back and, and talking about well are there any after school programs to where seniors can leave school at high at lunch and then come to work yeah. at our facility. We, I remember yeah. having that in high school. Oh yeah, I mean I, that was that was something 
that I think everybody had. Yeah. But for whatever reason, and when it happened, I don't know, but it's no longer there. And, 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 it, and it may be. <laughs> that was back when we had smoking barrels exactly. out there. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And I know you didn't stay there. You didn't run around that area. But no, no, I didn't. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> now I really lost my train of thought. But the point is, is that it, it, we, we lost that, that connectivity. And, and in fairness to the school system and, I mean, and, and the younger uh, rules and regulations and, and insurance, and I mean, everything's got more, a little bit sure. more technical where you just can't have some 18 year old trompsing around a building that, right. that, could be, that could be hurt. But at least we're having these discussions exactly. now and working collaboratively. And the, and the companies are doing this. Yes. It, you know, and so. Um, it was music to my ears when he when we when I started talking about apprenticeship the apprenticeship opportunities um, working with outside organizations such as the Hope Center um, which is working with individuals that have may have a criminal background but you know they've made their amends to society and, and they're working through this program which I think is fabulous or either or some type of an addiction that yep. they've overcome it's not a rehab but the point is is that there's gone are the days of just uh, put up a big sign in front of your business yeah. and then apply and, and here, apply apply here now, and then everybody right. everybody just shows up right. and there's this huge line. So we're having to tap into available work, not in, to develop the workforce pipeline for the future. You know, we're, tr we're having to look at ways to tap into markets that are available right now right. For, for employees. And so it, it, it's, it's it's an eye-opening experience for some of our existing industries of how the market has changed around them, meaning that uh, sometimes people would be willing to drive to Raleigh to make a, a you know, ten or fifteen thousand dollars more, um, you know, and so we're, we're Johnston County. We're losing about thirty, well, about sixty-five thousand people out of our workforce that uh, are going elsewhere. So, you know, it, it's, the triangle's getting bigger, it's expanding out, um, and that, that requires some of our, our existing industries to look at um, their salaries, you know, because, and, 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 and again, I don't wanna start naming company names, but I actually had a conversation with a company, and they did a, their, their national corporate office did a, a study on their salaries, and they raised all, they raised them all, their, 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 their salaries in this particular company because they realized that how much it takes to hire somebody, to vet them, to train yeah. them, and then if they're gone in six months, then they've got to start all over exactly. again, where it may be saying, well, instead of, instead of paying them $15 an hour, pay them $18. Right. You know, because it's, it's, it, we're, we're, we're a lot more fluid in citizens of, 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 you know, gone are the days of you go to work, you check in, you check out, in 30 years you get a gold watch and you retire. Right. Um, there's studies that show that kids and adults go, you know, go through like seven or eight careers in their, in their job career. Yeah. And so, so that's um, a totally different mindset for me, but yeah. I mean, I do understand that that no, is yeah. a reality right No, now. It, it is. And, and, and I heard a, a career person say something about how the mindsets of the millennials are, they're working on projects. It's not a career, it's not a job. It's like, and they, he was using the Apple, uh, is that, okay, they're assigning this team the app to create the Apple 6. I know there's more than that, but you know. And then once Apple 6 is created, they're say, okay, your next assignment is, you know, creating the Apple 7 or whatever next generation there is. And so they're not saying, I'm just checking in here day in day I'm yes. actually working on something where here's a beginning here's an end and oh by the way okay I got something else in and here's a beginning you know so it's, right. it's, kind of, it's still the same company but the way they're breaking Project it up based. is exactly right. instead yeah. of just yeah. going in and sure. working 8 to 5 and coming home going and home. retiring so going all yes yes so I know you brought um, Joy Callahan who mm -hmm. used to be with um, Johnson Community College and now she's got uh, she's working on the workforce in a consultant manner, mm -hmm. and so um, she's helping you with mm -hmm. a lot of this workforce initiatives that right. you're um, kind of the lead on. Mm -hmm. And so, um, is her plan to like take this data that you guys have collected 
uh, for Johnston County and, and just want to say how thrilled I am that we now actually have Johnston County specific data and we're not lumped into the, the regional data. Right, pool. right. Um, you know, and to work with the Alliance to kind of come up with some goals and direction for the for Johnston County. Right, and, and that kind of goes back to the 11 municipalities and everybody kind of doing their own thing. And, and having Joy, I mean, she's kind of a visionary of like, look guys, we all got to start working together. And when we can pool our resources together and we can collectively benefit all of our communities, I think it's a huge win. And because there obviously there's some strong chambers that are stronger and then others with regards to their program of work and, and what committees that they have formed and what skill sets each chamber chamber brings. But at the end of the day, if you're a Griffles or a Caterpillar or a Novo or a Berry Global, your labor shed is just not within that community. It's all over the county and beyond. Right. And so having Joy come in and, and her official title, we got her business cards the other day. So, okay. Uh, Johnston County Workforce Development Specialist. And, but Joy has uh, been a pleasure to, to know for the past up 10 years when yeah. she was with the community college and, and, and working with her. And then Vic and Kristen now, who's kind of taken her place. Uh, since then at community college, I mean, that is obviously a huge, huge asset and a huge selling tool for, for the county, the community college, but, but enjoy particularly having that knowledge again, um, it's, well, I, it's I, Chris doesn't need to know everything, but he just needs to know people that do. Yes. And, and so, and, 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 tr and trust, and trust those individuals and give them the ability to say, take it and run with it. Yeah. And so, I mean, I've got some ideas, and obviously we just had our meeting a few weeks ago, and, and she's already started following up and, and meeting with some of the people that we gave everyone a, a kind of a pledge card of how you would like to see it. Because, again, at the end of the day, Dana or Chris or Loretta or Maureen or whomever else is a part of the alliance, if, you know, the people, the boots on the ground are the industries, and you know how can we support them? Exactly, we need and to know so, what we need to do. Exactly, right? and yeah. then then we can then we can be the advocates either at the state level or the national level, and saying these we need these resources or this is where we're missing out. And so uh, I'm excited about having her. She's she's already spoken to uh, the breakfast breakfast before business yes. uh, last week. Um, so she's really kind of the, the economic development face now. Um, you know, I don't, I don't need to be, I don't need to be the, the front of that. And then, and then too, we've given her some tools, resource tools, some programs and stuff that whenever I do receive a, an RFI about a project and there's something about labor or something about data, then she, I can call on her right. to, to pull that. So it, it, it's one of those things that has made my job easier and, um, and she's getting a whole lot more work done at it and, the small amount of time during the month that we're she's charging us for than I could ever do right, uh, right, in a full right. day, yeah. and so. Uh, but you know, I think uh, it's it's going to be remain to be seen. We we all kind of pledged. You were involved in it, obviously. That you know, not just to do this and to just put it up on the shelf. Say, okay, we've checked that off. Let's go on to our next project and really not delve into it. So, obviously, we're going to be committed to meeting monthly as the Alliance to review those things. Uh, there were several people as we got closer to the end, noticed that there may be some gaps in there that we probably need to circle back. So it's not an end all be all, it's kind sure. of a living, breathing document Absolutely. that we can add to it. Uh, one of the things that just pops in my mind is, is, is child care. Yes. Um, and that, that's, a, that's a huge topic, not just the cost, but obviously with COVID coming out of COVID, um, a lot of people, in my opinion, just said, well, you know, we've been, I've been home here for the last two years. We have been able to make ends meet. Yeah. I don't know, you know, we've got our kids we need to raise. Uh, I can stay out of the workforce. Exactly. And so um, it's kind of figuring that out and, and making sure that, that, that we still provide those opportunities and have those services available, but then also uh, working with the partnership with children and, and, Working with individuals that are single parents, sure. that you know, come individual kids that are from broke homes, whether it's next gen and, and 
J.C. Pye, uh, individuals with uh, maybe mental, capa mental capacities or limitations. And, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's not going to be one, there's so many holes in the dike and we only have so many fingers, but it's not going to be a one size fits all. Yeah. And it's a journey. It's a, sure. it's, it's like, it's like Moses never reaching the promised land. We will never, if you ever think we're there, then we were sadly mistaken. It's, no, a, it's a constant journey and it's, it's, it's adapting and moving and, and being flexible enough to say, okay, the, the market is changing sure. and we need to adapt. Right. And the only way we can do that is through collaboration with, with organizations like the Chamber. Right, right. So, moving from workforce, let's talk a little bit about some exciting projects that are happening all okay. over Johnston County. <laughs> all right. Because there's a lot going on. And um, so if you want to start one part of the county and move around or have you want to, just, there are just so many things I think people need to know about that are, that are um, happening and um, right. across the county. Well, from an economic developer standpoint, is that uh, in my presentations I talk about the six cylinders of economic development, which is small business, uh, medical, uh, education, industrial, agricultural, and travel and tourism. And um, they all have to be running and firing off sure. you know, to, for the engine to run. And, and making sure that we find a good balance. And I, I mentioned, I said one twice, but it's the home builders. And one of the, I mean, that's, that's a huge industry for Johnson County, mm -hmm. but it can also, we can also butt heads in the sense that the particular the larger track home builders are you know looking for for land in Johnston County is growing. I mean everybody wants to move here, and I get that. I'm not saying we've got this type of that, but we need to be more proactive on where is residential and where can we preserve for industrial. Since 2003, RNE Consulting has been providing coverage for more than 1 million lives and over 75,000 companies with legal and comprehensive voluntary benefits to help their clients create a more robust benefit package with Legal Shield and ID Shield. You do a lot online. Most of us don't think about it, but the reality is that your private data and reputation can be stolen with just a few simple keystrokes. Rather than leaving security up to chance, you can proactively arm yourself against cyber crimes and reputation hacking with ID Shield's impressive privacy and reputation management consultation with coverages that include full service restoration, enhanced privacy management, financial accounting monitoring, and so much more. Legal Shield has been offering legal plans to members for over 45 years creating a world where everyone can access legal protection and everyone can afford it. Legal Shield also provides an employee benefit, allowing your employees the choice to carry personal, legal, and identity theft plans. No matter how trivial or traumatic the legal issue, Legal Shield's coverage includes advanced consultation and representation, 24-7 emergency assistance, family matters, document preparation, traffic, IRS, as well as other additional benefits. For more information, call Ruth Anderson at 919-631-2118 or email ruthanderson at shieldrep.com. projects that can be, you know, that can change generations. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have that because of just, you know, the large swaths of residential in pockets of Johnston County. And so I can, with, with 40 soon to be opening, 540 opening, US 70 transitioning mm -hmm. to I-42, gone are the days of it just being around Clayton. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and the 42 area. Flowers. I mean, you know, the western edge of the county. Now, I-95 and east is in play. Yeah. And so, um, we need to be, and, and the county commissioners, I think, have done a very good job 
uh, over the last couple of years of, of making sure that they've tried to direct the residential growth into the higher density areas where they already have the services, parks and recreation, fire right. risk, all, all, all the things that uh, uh, that are in place, yeah. infrastructure that is in place, oh, and quality of life things as, as opposed to just, you know, just a, a blanket uh, bedroom community of Raleigh because we do need to be uh, proactive in, in reserving adequate supply of water and sewer for our industries and in land. Yes. I mean, that, that's, so that, and that, that's the key uh, because the residential market drives the land cost um, compared to, you know, industrial. And so, uh, you know, individuals who are selling their land, to, you know, they want to get a, a premium price and I don't begrudge them one bit. Point is, is that sometimes that squeezes out industrial opportunities because of, of, of that factor. But then also, as residential tends to grow, then companies want to make sure there's a good buffer between them and the industries, yeah. and, and and vice versa. So we need to make sure that we do strategic land planning and, and have processes in place to where we can have both. Right. Um, and as opposed to people just living here, getting in the car, working in Raleigh, or working triangle and then coming home. Um, we welcome them, but the point is, is that ideally we'd love to them to live, work, play sure. here, here yeah. in Johnston County. Um, so obviously Clayton's a hot market, but that's not, you know, I'm not sharing any, any big, we <laughs> big, <are>. line, <laughs> big line on that, uh, you know, uh, but you know, the I-95 corridor is, 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 is looking and, and we're, we're, you know, we're working with property owners that are looking at, uh, and when I, when I meet with a property owner, I ask them, and whenever I write them a letter, I'm like, what's your vision? What's your, your vision? What's your family's vision for this? And if it's to maintain the agricultural aspect of it, fine, then let's support them in that effort. Um, you know, the Forks Business Park for that, you know, just a perfect example is that, you know, they those families, you know, want to provide opportunities for industry to grow yeah. there where people can live in Four Oaks and go to work right there in their, yeah. their backyard. And so it's kind of like the same thing with the with the, the Clayton Industrial Area with, uh, that we mentioned with the pharmaceuticals and stuff. So, um, Let's talk I'll, about I'll some of the cool stuff going on in Selma. Oh, with these fields? Yes, I mean, and, okay. you know, because having grown up here and gone to Smithfield Selma High uh -huh. School and and all that, just the, the resurgence and the, the vitality that's that's um, now in Selma is very exciting. It is. Um, they've done a wonderful, a wonderful job over the last year or two with the resurgence of their downtown district. Sure. Um, they, I, I met with the mayor earlier today, and they're very progressive in the sense of, of, of allowing stuff like uh, I'm trying to think of the, I hate to say open carry alcohol, but kind of a the social district. Social district. Yes. Thank you very much. See, I knew you'd be a man. I was like, <laughs> yes, because we're trying to get to trying the to get one. Home okay, well, then, they, I mean, think about it. Yes. I mean, you've got Raleigh, Durham talking about this, and Selma already has a court court put in place. So, I mean, it, it's really thinking big, small yeah. towns that are thinking big. Yeah. So, kudos to them. Um, there's a lot of projects that are considering the, the Eastfield development. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful product in, in the sense that it's mixed use where you've got commercial, medical, entertainment, multifamily, single family, uh, residential, I mean, elderly living, um, farmer's market area. And so it's kind of a, I refer to it as the North Hills of Johnson County. You got that, and then you've got an industrial now, on the flip side, and bringing it back to Clayton, you know, you got the Copper District, yes, which I'm very, very excited exciting. about. And that's going to be kind of the, 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 the North Hills of Johnston County. That's probably a little bit closer to, because uh, uh, that's going to be uh, office, and you know, it's right across from the hospital. Uh, it's going to be very dense in the sense that apartment-style living, multi-story yeah. type stuff. And I was on... Um, a conference call or a Zoom presentation or something and, and was talking about how when they announced that project about the ability to now go after Class A office projects, which we've never been able to do, 
And so when Dean and them were able to, Davis group um, is able to get that up, you know, to recruit um, office style uh, businesses and industries, uh, tech companies, you name it. Right. Uh, that's something that we've never been able to do. But, um, and somebody said, well, why would they, why would they want to be in Raleigh? And I went to Waze or Google Earth, I can't remember what, whatever, but you, whatever, whatever travel app that everybody pulls up. Right. And I said, from where the Davis, where that copper district is, to Red Hat in downtown Raleigh. And it was six, it took them 16 minutes. It was sure. 16 miles, but it took them 16 minutes. Yes. Then I went to North Hills and said, from North Hills to downtown Raleigh at Red Hat. And it was 16 minutes. Now it was six miles, but it was still 16. I mean, it, it was the, the perception is so different. Oh, it, we, yeah. It, it, you, if I said the Copper District, it, you would have thought I was talking about something on the other side of the moon. Exactly. Um, Come on, from Johnson. It, it, yeah. <laughs> when in reality, it's a mile a minute exactly. because of our wonderful transportation connectivity. Right. Um, but uh, it, it's it's just creatures of habit, and you know when we go down to the beach. We'll, my wife thinks we're at the beach when we sit, when we get into Wilmington. I like waiting another forty five minutes <laughs> exactly. to get there. But you know, but in everybody's mind, you're, you're sure, at the beach. Right. You're at the beach. So it's kind of that same thing. Is that it's just North Hills and it's downtown, and and I'm like, well, yeah, but it's time is you know. And so people that understand it, or particularly people that are not from the area, they get it quicker. Right. If you've grown up in the area like I have, or grown up in the area like you have, it's like, who in the world would want, you know, it's just one of those kind of out of, you know, Fuqua Arena, I remember, you know, and so it's like, yes. you don't understand the whole world. It's kind exactly. of evolved and changed. Change. So. Sure. But, but the county, to, to answer your question, uh, you know, Eastfield, we're excited about that. Uh, the Forks Business Park is getting a lot of looks. Uh, the town of Benson has... Uh, uh, quite a bit of product. Del Parker Group, they're, they're mm -hmm. in the building about a 280,000 square foot building there. Chris Norville at Edgewater, they're building a half a million square feet uh, down there. So uh, uh, in the Triangle Business Journal, I think they mentioned that we've got about 1.4 million square feet under construction, which is phenomenal. A year ago, we didn't have yeah, any. Yeah, I know. So um, it kudos to our county commissioners and our leadership for, uh, for believing in the economic development advisory board. And, and, and encouraging because we've missed out on a tremendous amount of product and opportunity because we just didn't have any buildings. So right. hopefully we'll have those. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. Make things a little bit easier for Yeah, me. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so the last thing I just want to touch on is um, our chambers of commerce are mm -hmm. strong here in this county and, and we work really well together and it's been a pleasure working with them on you know projects like um, Joko Works and Launch Joko and the Workforce Alliance and um, so a lot of people don't really understand you know well, what's what the Chambers of Commerce have to do with with you know economic development or workforce development so can you talk a little bit about the how important these partnerships are for for economic development. Um, and workforce development and advocacy issues that we need oh, yeah. to talk about, like infrastructure. Um, can you speak to that? Sure thing. You know, well, and you brought up Joko Works, and I didn't even mention that as far as the working relationship with the Alliance, and that's kind of how it got started. That we, the Alliance had been working on that and, and exposing again the younger generation to opportunities here in Johnson County. So we're very fortunate that we've had that. Uh, back live this year. We're very fortunate that our industries um, have, have started to come back and be, be live with that. And so, um, so thank you for reminding me of that. But uh, the, the importance of the chambers, I mean, it, it, again, it, it all comes down to networking relationships. And uh, the more people that are viewed and work as allies, then the better off we're all of a line in the movie of uh, the gladiator that says well, our only chances of revival is we work together as one right. and so when we're all trying to do our different things then it doesn't necessarily vote well or we get a bunch of different we never really sure. solve any problems and so uh, when we I've always been a strong supporter of regionalism and regionalism can be 
multi-county, meaning the Research Triangle region, or it can be regionalism within the county itself where sure. the towns are working together. Right. And so from an avenue standpoint that, you know, whether it's DOT related type stuff and, right. and having the cha chamber support DOT transportation, it's not going to just affect and benefit a small group of people. Everybody's going to affect everybody. everybody. Um, and I mean, you can go down the list, whether it's education um, or public works or infrastructure, uh, meeting those needs, um, and, and, and again, just, just figuring out and, and making sure we've got a pulse on the finger of the community because uh, the Chambers of Commerce traditionally represent the small business first. And those are the Main Street people. Those are the people that traditionally live in the town. Right. And, and yeah, I mean, obviously we have large industries that are, that are partners and we, we appreciate that support. But, you know, when you think about the volunteerism and, and the quality of life, Yes. That sometimes gets overused, but it's you know um, the town of Clayton has done a fabulous job in, 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 in the quality of life and promoting the quality of life and, and the awards and recognitions that have been seen across you know the state and the nation about how Clayton has you know it so it, it all kind of it's it's a, a tight net weave of of uh, a tapestry that that it has to all. Right. You know, on the back side, you may have all these these loose threads and and and, and debates and stuff. But on the, when you turn it over, the end result is something that I think hopefully we can all be very proud of. Right. And it starts with the, with the chamber. Well, I, I, as I said, I love the collaborative projects that we that we're doing, and each one of our municipalities and communities are unique. Right. And that's one of the things I love about Johnston County is that that we can work together. But we also have unique things that are happening in each one of our communities right. here. And so it's very exciting. So anything else you want everybody to know? No. Uh, uh, just just, to Earth I mean, no, I was just saying, I just, uh, <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a long, long time ago. I was say, I haven't seen uh, the Earth, Wind, and Fire release their tour yet this year, but I am confident that uh, one of us will be there. Well, you were there last time. I was time. there. Yeah, because yes. I was out of town when you were down in Federal. So you see, yes. I remember that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's our common thread, well, right? That's <laughs> Well, I appreciate you being um, here as a guest for Conversations well, with the Vault. Yeah, and, um, I appreciate it. I'm glad I'm not thrown in there and locked up. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> we would be able to get you out because we lack a key. So we keep this open. You got a back one like an indie group with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, and um, I hope you have a great week. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks.